Hi, I'm Peter Tobias, President of the Orchid Conservation Alliance. We work to create and expand orchid reserves in the tropics. Behind me is one such area in Colombia, and that's me napping after lunch in the reserve. It's an excellent place for a siesta. Although it's amusing to see me napping, it's not amusing to see how we as a global society are napping in the face of so many threats to our environment. It's no secret that this beautiful planet has very serious problems in its land, in its air, and in its water. I've been a nature lover all my life, and I've been an orchid grower since the 70s. Like many people, I started with a white phalaenopsis given to me by my wife. Little did she know what she was starting. Orchids were first recognized in antiquity, and today there are about 30,000 named species, with more being discovered all the time. Orchids grow from Alaska in the north to Patagonia in the south, but they are the most common in the humid tropics, especially in the Andes of Ecuador and Colombia. I love growing them in my greenhouse and marveling at the complexity of their flowers. But it wasn't until a friend from Brazil invited me to visit and see orchids in the wild that I began to understand two things. First, what tropical nature, where so many orchids live, is all about. And second, what peril tropical nature and those orchids are in. And so, together with Ron Kaufman and Steve Beckendorf, two like-minded orchid growers, we started the Orchid Conservation Alliance. Our goal was to harness the energies of other like-minded orchid growers to protect wild populations of rare and endangered orchids. So, how do we do this? Well, blowing up bulldozers bent on clearing the jungle would surely be fun. But what we really do is raise money, mainly in the United States, and give it to organizations in the tropics that will buy and manage land that is rich in those rare and endangered orchids. This is a picture from our first reserve, the Rio Anzu Reserve, developed in central Ecuador in collaboration with Lou Jost and the Ecominga Foundation. It's an unusual limestone canyon in the otherwise mostly volcanic rock of the Andes. This reserve was established to protect a large population of this orchid, Phragmopedium pierceii. That flower is about three inches tall on a 20 inch stem and it's really a dramatic sight to see it in the sun on the riverbank. Now, when you establish a reserve, you also conserve all the other flora and fauna in the habitat, some of which you may not even know are there. For example, this orchid was found in the reserve and was for the basis for a whole new genus of orchids. Of course, there are also many other orchids in the reserve. When you establish a reserve, you protect everything that's in it, whether you know it's there or not. The OCA has also helped to establish another of the Ecominga Foundation's reserves, this one in northern Ecuador, the Dracula Reserve. This is not the South American lair of the famed Count Dracula, but a region of great diversity of the Dracula orchid genus. In this reserve are found new and rare Dracula orchids such as Turborchii, Trigonopetala, Gygus, and Andreetti. It also hosts many new discoveries in other genera as well, such as Poroglossum rawi, Scaphocepal and Ziegleri, and Platystelli baccaroi. So far, the OCA has helped with seven reserves, three in Ecuador, three in Colombia, and one in Brazil. To date, we have donated $470,000 to set aside 3,500 acres. Now, on the scale of the Amazon Basin, or the Andes Mountain Range, that's a trivial amount of land. But if you are the orchid Phragmopedium fisheri, the 18 acres of the Phragmopedium fisheri reserve in northern Ecuador is the only haven you will find in that country. We raise money in four ways. Selling memberships in the Alliance, begging for donations, selling books, t-shirts, and so forth, and taking people on trips to see orchids in the wild, such as this one to Brazil's Rio Negro. The orchid trips are certainly the most fun and they are very popular. So far, we've organized 24 of them from China to South America and Europe, and we're eager to take lots of people on many more of these amazing journeys. 
I'm hoping that you will join up with the 250 or so members in orchid societies who formed the Orchid Conservation Alliance. When I said that we had donated $470,000 to set aside 3,500 acres, it wasn't Ron Kaufman, Steve Beckendorf, me, and Mary Gerritsen, our newest director, who made that possible. It was the members who made it possible. So join up. You'll be in great company. And the orchids you're caring for will grow and bloom better, knowing that you're caring for their wild cousins, too. Seu canto cruzou o Amazonas